Welcome back to Sissy Maya. Make sure to subscribe to our channel to never miss an update. Additionally, consider subscribing to my Patreon to get access to these features, and much more. When I faced my reflection, I was filled with horror, no, dread, fear, and a strange discomfort overwhelmed me. The sight was beyond my worst expectations, and I had no desire to rise from the chair. I wished to remain there, in that state, if need be, but that was the extent of my willingness. Everything else? Absolutely not. Get up, dear, we need to get the dress on you. I refuse to wear a dress, mom. I understand you don't want to, but you don't have a choice, do you? Experiencing a surge of defiance, alongside two other individuals, we tampered with the girls' locker room door at the church, catching three of them inside. The reaction from the parents was less than enthusiastic when they had to force the door open to free them, and my dad was furious when one of the others confessed and we were apprehended. To compound matters, the girls were the ones tasked with determining our punishment. What they revealed next filled me with dread. I was to spend the next two weeks, every day, dressed as a girl, even at school. Given that we attended the church-affiliated school, everyone was aware of our transgression and subsequent punishment. Yesterday, Mom attempted to transform my appearance just to gauge how I would look, but I resisted, and she relented until this morning. It was a nightmare beyond imagining. My father pushed me down into the chair, then stood there as Mom started in on me, beginning with my hair. Since I wear it extra long, she put my hair in pigtails, complete with a red ribbon woven in that ended in a huge bow on the end of each pigtail. My makeup was perfect, the right skin tone, but my face looked softer, the eyeshadow made my eyes brighter, and the eyeliner gave them an oval shape. The lipstick was the same color as the ribbons. Once mom had gone that far, and against my will, she and dad took me to my room, and made me stand in the middle of the room. Dad helped take off my briefs while mom handed me the panties. Pink nylon, they slid up my now smooth legs as fast as I could yank them on. Then came a torturous garment mom called a corslet, wrapping it around me, then, after the hooks were made, she pulled the laces so tight that I was sure that I would pass out. My chest was pushed up while my waist was pushed down, leaving the effect that I had a feminine chest and wider hips. Then the pantyhose, a very short slip, and finally, the dress. Blue with white piping, it had a white bib collar with a red tie at the neck. The shoes were low black heels. As I stepped into them mom handed me the lipstick, also a dark red, and faced me to the mirror. My shame was complete when I saw myself. The dress was at mid-thigh, the slip pushing the skirt out, much like a little girl would have. My legs were shapely, and while I hated to admit it, I didn't look that bad. I just looked like a little girl. I traced my lips with the lipstick. Every girl carries a purse because they lack pockets for storing things. Your wallet, lipstick, tissues, and some lunch money are in your purse. Mom and Dad remained firm, giving me my books and gesturing towards the door. I understood, I had to go to school alone or Dad would accompany me. Tears threatened as I stepped outside, feeling the cool air and the gentle breeze lifting my skirt. Amidst the scent of my perfume, I took my first steps towards school, under my parents' watchful gaze. As I reached the corner, two girls approached, asking my name with serious expressions. I felt the weight of my parents' expectations, failure to respond correctly meant another week of dressing this way. With embarrassment, I repeated the words mom had coached me to say. Hi, I'm Emmy, short for Emily, and that's Emily with a K. That's a lovely name for a young girl like you, Emmy. Allow us to escort you to school. It wouldn't be safe for you to cross the street alone, would it? Things were escalating quickly, and I was only a block away from home. The girls accompanied me to my first class, allowing me to enter alone, facing the stairs of my classmates. Under the teacher's stern gaze, I took my assigned seat, and class began. There was no more giggling. The rest of the day followed the same pattern, stares, pointing, but no words spoken. I spotted two other boys who seemed even more out of place, both looked about five years old and had to carry teddy bears everywhere. I had to use the restroom twice, 
each time having to go to the office. On the way back home, the same girls walked me to my door, smiling all the while. As soon as I entered, my mother inquired about how it went, and I couldn't hold back. Tears flowed uncontrollably as she wordlessly led me to my room. She removed the dress, gently untied my pigtails, and rummaged through my closet, selecting a short skirt and blouse akin to those worn by girls at my school. She touched up my makeup, brushed and trimmed my hair, transforming me into a typical teenage girl. I felt a surge of happiness, almost bringing on more tears, not because of the clothes, but because I finally looked normal, not like a child trapped in high school. Do you understand why we made you go to school like that? To teach me a lesson. Yes, indeed, but what lesson? That girls are delicate, and we shouldn't bully them. No, dear. It was to instill humility in you. Going forward, you'll have more freedom in your clothing choices, but remember, any rule-breaking will mean more time in dresses. Is that clear? Yes, mm, good. Just be yourself, follow the rules, and soon enough, you'll be back in pants. The following day, the two girls greeted me as if I'd always been one of them, sparing me from their condescending tone. My two friends still wore little girl dresses, and I considered myself fortunate. Another day passed, during which I wore a short pullover dress mom referred to as a shift. It wasn't too bad, and I was getting accustomed to the exposed feeling, with so much of my legs showing. I made a conscious effort to stay out of trouble. Then, on Thursday, one of the boys yanked my bra strap, causing it to snap painfully against my back. Reacting instinctively, I turned and hit him. The girls who witnessed it applauded, but the teacher in the nearby classroom only saw the boy hitting the floor, resulting in my immediate trip to the office. Despite my protests and the presence of witnesses who confirmed the boy's actions, the principal still called my mother. But he snapped my bra, mom, and it hurt. Those girls saw him do it, they even mentioned his known for doing that to girls. So why am I the one being punished again? I believe you, dear. It's not your fault. Initially, I considered extending your dress punishment until the end of the year. However, because those girls corroborated your story and I know how painful it can be, I'm only extending it for another month. But why? I didn't do anything. Because girls don't respond with physical aggression, sweetheart, and we warned you against getting into any altercations. But I'm a boy, not a girl. Well, technically, yes but that's not an excuse. However, I understand your perspective. So, I'll reduce your time in a dress by one week, leaving you with one month. But next time, respond as a girl would. Another fight, and you'll be in dresses for the rest of the year. Clear? Yes, mm. That's a good girl. Now, come help me with dinner. From then on, I adhered to the typical attire of the girls, always opting for skirts, blouses, or tops, occasionally a dress, but never trousers. The skirts and dresses all reached mid-thigh, serving as a constant reminder to mind my posture and movements to avoid any inadvertent exposure. At the beginning of the second week, mom insisted I wear low heels and padded my bras to a full A cup. After completing my homework, she provided tutorials on makeup application and hairstyling. Over time, I befriended some of the other girls, finding solace in our companionship, feeling less conspicuous. However, my two friends, both caught cheating on a test, were relegated back to little girl dresses, and we kept our distance from each other. On Monday, marking my third week in dresses, a friend named Kenny asked if I was attending the dance that Saturday night. I declined, lacking any enthusiasm for the event. Then he surprised me by asking if he could accompany me to the dance. Before I could respond, our principal happened to pass by and intervened. I believe that would be a splendid idea. Attending the dance as a girl, with an escort, will provide you with a deeper understanding of the preparations girls undergo for a date. I look forward to seeing you there, Emily. She walked away, leaving Kenny grinning, though my own mood was far from joyful. Our school dances were essentially mini-proms, occurring every two months. It was an opportunity for all the girls to glam up, don elegant dresses, heels, and have their hair styled. 
With only this week and one more left in my dress sentence, the thought of attending one of these dances didn't sit well with me. However, refusing the principal was out of the question, I could only nod reluctantly. I was going, and to make matters worse, I had a date. By the time I arrived home, I was filled with tension, knowing I had to break the news to my parents. I confided in mom first, hoping she'd understand my reluctance, but she believed attending would teach me a valuable lesson. She promptly announced that we would go shopping the next day after school. You'll need a party dress, she remarked, jotting down notes on a pad. I realized the dress was just the beginning. Since this ordeal began, my parents had been strict about my attire but lenient on other matters. Mom involved me in nightly kitchen duties, something I'd never done before, and ensured my skin remained smooth and soft. Yet, despite the strictness, she seemed closer to me than ever. I had mastered my own makeup routine and could create various hairstyles, which kept her off my case. But this was different, something special. I wanted to blame Kenny for asking me, but I dared not. I also couldn't shake the curiosity about why he chose me. The following day at school, news of Kenny's invitation spread like wildfire. While most girls accepted it without issue, a few boys made my life difficult until a teacher intervened, proposing they attend in dresses themselves. After that, the harassment ceased, but I was acutely aware of the opinions swirling around me. As soon as I stepped foot in the house, Mom and I headed to the mall, a place I dreaded. It was the hangout spot for all the kids in our neighborhood. While most were aware of my punishment, few had actually seen me in it due to our differing schedules. But here, with my mother, everyone would witness it. Summoning all my courage, I refrained from refusing. I had to go, or risk prolonging this dressing ordeal. Quite the predicament, isn't it? Since you're nearly fifteen, I believe it's time to let you mature a bit more, she remarked. I was clueless about her intentions until she exclaimed, Ah, here it is. We walked towards the shop she pointed out, and I saw that it was a lingerie store. We went into the shop, with mom in the lead of course, then, as I looked at the splash of colors that seemed to run rampant in the store, mom took my hand and led me to a spot behind a curtain. Without much of anything between me and everyone else in the store, mom told me to take my blouse off, which I did, then she unfastened my bra and handed it to me. On the small shelf next to her were a pair of small boxes. As I watched she opened on and took out what looked to me like a perfectly formed chess. Hold still she said, then, using some kind of adhesive, she attached one, then the other to my chess. I glanced in the mirror and saw that I now had a chest that not only looked real, the weight of them pulled on my chest and I realized that I could now wear almost any bra in the store that fit me. Those are slightly bigger than you were before, and will fill out your bras better. It also gives you a wider selection of dresses to choose from for the dance, and best of all, they will stay in place for almost two weeks. That was about the time I would be able to get out of these clothes, so all I could do was sigh and accept it. Mom was elated when I didn't say anything, but she did buy me two new bras for what she called everyday wear, and one that was special, just for the dance. In her words, you might as well wear that one Emmy, just in case we find the right dress. Then she held up what was clearly a panty of sorts, handed it to me, and waited while I slipped off my skirt and stepped into it. It was padded on the seat and sides, which, when I pulled the skirt back on, gave me hips that were in proportion to my frame and a new chess. Mom was grinning. The bra mom had me wear was black, a front hook push-up with underwires, the cups were lace-trimmed and barely covered my feminine chest so to speak. On a girl it would look sexy as hell. On me, well, I was shocked at what I looked like, but what could I do? Mom paid the bill and we left, heading for the dress shop in one of the department stores. Now we can find a dress that will accentuate your new charms, and you'll look adorable. I'm eager to see you fully dressed up, Emmy. I don't want to be all dressed up, Mom. You keep saying that, but I don't understand why. You're absolutely stunning, dear. That's why that boy asked you out. But, Mom, I'm also a boy. Well, technically, yes, but you don't appear like one, do you? Not at the moment, but. What about your friends? 
Are they still wearing little girl dresses? Whoa, mom was making a statement, and I caught it loud and clear. She envisioned me as a debutante, the daughter she never had, and any objections from me might land me back in one of those childish little girl dresses, still obligated to attend the dance. Keeping quiet and going along with her plan seemed like the safest bet. After all, it meant I'd at least look presentable and blend in with the other girls, a prospect that grew more appealing after witnessing my friends donning little girl dresses for two weeks straight. Without uttering a word, I trailed behind her into the dress shop. As I perused a rack near the entrance, Mom informed me that I could choose my own dress, as long as she approved. Fantastic. Now I had the freedom to select my attire, though Mom would undoubtedly take credit for my choice, implying my preference for dressing as a girl. With Mom's piercing gaze fixed on me, I began the daunting task of finding a dress in a color I could tolerate. I was clueless about styles, leaving me uncertain how a particular dress would complement my figure. I had selected two dresses, one black and one red, and was still browsing when Mom handed me one she fancied, also in black. Adding it to the others, I continued my search. After scouring the entire store, Mom and I retreated to the fitting rooms to try them on. The first, the red dress, seemed passable, though I wasn't particularly enthused about its knee-length skirt with ample flounce. The one Mom chose was a sheath dress with a v-neckline and cap sleeves. Both of us dismissed it with a shake of our heads. The black dress I had chosen featured an empire waist, a square neckline just above my chest, wispy sleeves hanging over my shoulders, a satin underdress, and a sheer black chiffon overskirt. Its hemline grazed my ankles. I reluctantly admitted that I looked rather good in it, a sentiment echoed by Mom, who promptly purchased it. Foolishly, I assumed we could head home. Now we need to find the perfect shoes and accessories. Our next destination was a costume jewellery store, where we stumbled upon a necklace and earring set featuring black stones surrounded by silver-clad rhinestones. The pendant rested just above and between my chest. Although the earrings were pierced, unlike my ears, Mom assured me it was no issue. Within minutes, I sported a pair of gold studs, one in each ear. We scoured three shoe stores before Mom deemed we'd found the perfect pair. They were black sandals with a three-inch heel, adorned with straps in a floral pattern and an ankle strap. We found the purse at another boutique. Now that we've taken care of all that, Mom declared, let's swing by my salon and book you an appointment for Saturday afternoon. I knew that was part of her plan and remained silent as we made a pit stop at her salon on our way home. To my surprise, as we stepped inside, I was introduced as Emmy, and nobody batted an eye. Mom introduced me as her daughter, a label I welcomed, not eager to be identified as her son, especially in my current attire. They handed me a book to browse through for hairstyle options, and then we headed back home. With just one day left before Saturday, I sorted through my things and then flipped open the book I had been given. As I scanned through the pages, each hairstyle seemed more intricate than the last until I stumbled upon the one on page 128. Mom had given me free reign to choose any feminine style, with the caveat that I would have to live with my decision. Figuring that by the end of the week I wouldn't care much, I opted for the most feminine style I could find, the one that reminded me of a character from Gone with the Wind. I marked the page and sought out Mom. Oh, that's lovely, Emmy. You'll look stunning with that hairstyle. Relieved that she approved, I returned to my room and stashed the book away. That night, as I donned my nightgown and caught sight of my silhouette, I was almost taken aback by the resemblance. Through the sheer fabric, there was no way anyone could discern they weren't natural. I had to sleep on my side or back that night, as lying on my chest was uncomfortable with the pressure on those faux mounds. The next day at school, I noticed my two friends weren't dressed in little girl attire but blended in with the other girls. Although we hadn't spoken since our punishment began, I couldn't resist finding out what had transpired and sought them out in the cafeteria. What happened? I thought you two were supposed to endure the entire punishment in those silly dresses. My mom, Jordan, now known as Jenny, explained, set me up with a date for the dance. She said it was time I experienced what real girls go through to look pretty. 
Olivia, formerly Olive, echoed similar sentiments. It struck me that all of us had received similar messages from our mothers. Each of us had secured dates for the dance and donned new party dresses. While I didn't suspect any foul play, it did strike me as somewhat peculiar. Most of our peers had now grown accustomed to our attire, the novelty of seeing us in dresses having worn off. However, some girls had begun including me, in particular, in their discussions about various girly topics like who the cute boys were, who they deemed the latest heartthrob on screen, their preferred perfume, and so forth. One girl even inquired if I had made any changes, and although I was initially perplexed, I later realized she had noticed how much fuller my chest appeared now, coupled with their newfound bounce as I walked. With the addition of the padded panty brief, I also acquired hips, enhancing the fit of my skirt and adding a swaying motion as I moved. On Saturday morning, Mom instructed me to wear a skirt and blouse with front buttons, making it easier to get ready after returning from the salon. After breakfast and tidying up the house, just past noon, she and I headed to the salon. I handed the book to the stylist who would be attending to my hair. Her smile upon seeing my choice left me hopeful that I'd made a good decision. The hairdressing process took nearly an hour, though being a first-time visitor to a salon, I lacked a point of reference for what constituted a long or short appointment. As per mom's instructions, my back remained turned to the mirror throughout, leaving me in suspense about my appearance. However, the smiles exchanged among the staff boosted my confidence. All I knew for certain was that the chemicals emitted a strong odour, the hairdryer was uncomfortably hot, and the process of brushing out my hair and removing the rollers proved less than enjoyable. Finally, the stylist swivelled my chair around, and I beheld my reflection, complete with my new hairstyle. She had transformed my hair into a blonde shade matching the picture, and it was longer too. Still reeling from the sight, Mom took my hand and led me to the manicurist. Silently, she began cleaning and filing my nails, which had grown longer over the past three weeks. Then, she coated them in a soft reddish-brown polish with silver metal flakes, causing them to shimmer in the light as I stared at my reflection in the mirror. Emmy, darling, you look absolutely wonderful, Mom exclaimed, visibly pleased. Yes, the hairstylist chimed in, and what's even better is that after the dance, your hair will fall into a perfect pageboy style, with curls cascading down the back and waves framing the sides. She inspected my hair once more before continuing, plus, the perm will make it easier for you to manage. With regular care, it should last until school starts again in the fall. Perm? I echoed, taken aback. Does that last a long time? Sweetheart, the hairstylist explained, you'll look fabulous for about six months, then, of course, we'll need to touch it up. Six months. Mom. Remember what I told you, Emmy? Mom's voice broke through my thoughts. You had the freedom to choose, but you'd have to accept the consequences. You insisted on making the decision yourself, and I allowed it. This is the style you picked, so I suppose you'll just have to live with it. The weight of her words bore down on me, and I felt a surge of emotion. Six more months living as a girl. By then, I feared I might forget what it's like to be a boy altogether. Once my nails had dried, Mom and I made our way home. Throughout the journey, I yearned to question why Mom had permitted me to undergo this transformation, but deep down, I already knew the answer. Mom had always longed for a daughter, and I was as close as she was going to get. She must have anticipated the outcome, a fact she confirmed before we even arrived home. You'll look simply darling in a page boy, Emmy. But why did? Why did I let you do that? It's easy to figure, really, it is. Emmy, listen to me. For three weeks now you have been dressing as a girl, and while you don't see it, everyone else does. You have adopted mannerisms of a girl your age. Why, you even talk like a girl your age. You can do your own makeup at least as good as any girl your age, and a lot better than I did for you. You have a larger chest now, and I know that you like them, I've seen you touch them once in a while. With that padded panty brief, you have a figure to die for, and with your eyes done, a face that makes men drool. You haven't been a girl long enough to see all this, but your father and I do, and so did Kenny. 
That's why he asked you to be his date for this dance. Emmy, you have become so much like a girl that you don't even realize it. When we get home I want you to stand in front of the mirror and look at yourself. Then tell me that you do not like what you see. Okay. Dad saw me and his mouth dropped open as mom and I walked past him. I did not even look back, but went to my room and did what mom told me to do. From the top of my head to my toes, there was no sign that I was a boy. I quickly took off my clothes, except for the panties, and stood there looking in the mirror. Since I had tucked things away, I still looked like a girl. The red of my nails flashed when my hand fluttered against my hair, and I began to smile. I was looking at myself, and still saw a girl standing there. That's how I was when mom walked into my room. She looked at me and I saw her reflection in the mirror. My hand went to my chest, and I squeezed it. I was right, wasn't I? I wanted to refuse, truly I did, but I couldn't bring myself to do it. Mom had been correct. I had initially adopted the girl's mannerisms to blend in and diminish the teasing, but it had become second nature, and now, well, it was just part of who I was. Let's get your skin as smooth as silk again, Emmy. Come along with me. I'll assist you. We used that awful cream on my skin again, then a razor before I sank into the hot, oily, sweet-smelling bubble bath. When the water went cold I got out, dried off, and with a towel around myself, I went back into my room where mom was waiting for me, a pair of black satin panties in her hand. I was without shame at this point, and simply let the towel drop to the floor, then stepped into the panties and pulled them to my waist. At the vanity mom watched as I used the skin lotion first, then the creamy foundation to make my face all one color. The powder gave my skin a matte look as soon as I brushed away the excess. Blue eye shadow with a gray over that and silver just under each eyebrow. Black eyeliner on each upper lid, black pencil under each eye, then black mascara to make my lashes longer and fuller. Peach blusher first, then a touch of coral which I blended with a small sponge. Once I made sure I had no manly bulges, I pulled on the new bra, made it secure, then pulled my chest up even higher in the cups. Then came the garter belt. I had not seen this before, but it was obvious how to wear it, and I wrapped it around my waist and fastened it. Mom pushed the garter's tabs under my panties, explaining the if I didn't, I would have a heck of a time in the bathroom. The nylons rolled up my legs, then mom and I made the garter tabs secure to the hose and she adjusted the tension for me. I glanced in the mirror and grinned at myself. I looked like a baby playing playmate. Mom helped me get the dress over my head and zipped it up, then I set my feet into the shoes and made the ankle strap tight. The necklace was perfect with the dress, and the chandelier earrings set of my hair just right. I wore no other jewellery. Mom handed me her best perfume, which I dabbed on my ears neck, elbows and knees, then I did my lips in the brightest red we had in the house. After snapping a few pictures, mom embraced me. I was correct, wasn't I, Emmy? You enjoy being a girl, don't you? My response was timid at best, but she caught it when I murmured, yes, I suppose I do. Now that we've settled that, I want you to have a wonderful time tonight, dear. I headed towards the door, but mom intervened, insisting that I wait until she called for me. Furthermore, she advised me to count to twenty before descending the stairs. Tidy up your purse while you wait, she added, almost closing the door behind her. Gazing once more into the mirror, I beheld the girl I had denied for so long but could no longer ignore. With a smile, I packed my school ID, lipstick, and some money into my purse and waited. It wasn't long before I heard Mom's voice calling my name. I counted to twenty before leaving my room for my very first date. Kenny was standing at the bottom of the stairs with my parents. When he saw me his mouth dropped open just like Dad's did, then they both smiled at me. Kenny handed me a wrist corsage, then, after some more pictures, he took me to the car so his dad could drive us to the dance. Clearly his dad did not see what he expected to see. I knew that by the way he was staring at me. As we walked into the dance, I had his arm, just like mom told me, smiling the whole time. All of the boys and most of the girls just stared at us as we found our table. The tops of my chest could be seen, 
and since they looked real, I drew a lot of stares, mostly from the boys as they tried to look down my dress. It was all I could do not to smile. Kenny of course was grinning, and he never once let go of my hand. We danced, drank pop, swapped gossip with the other kids, and danced some more. During the last dance the lights went dim and Kenny pulled me closer to him. Emmy he said, and I turned to look up at him. His lips touched mine, like a butterfly touch, yet it sent shivers up and down my back. On my doorstep he once again pulled me closer and kissed me, this time it was not like a butterfly but a truck as his lips found mine and his tongue flicked against my lips. Weak in the knees I broke away and went in the house, confused no more. Mom had figured out what I had known for a while, but she really knew it when she attached the silicone forms. The way they looked, pulled on my chest, and made me feel only solidified what I already knew. I liked being a girl, it was as simple as that. Not at first, but not long after that either. The way the nylons felt, the tension of the bra around my chest, the way the clothes looked and felt, and then there is the scent of my perfume and makeup. Mom thought that I didn't know that my hair would be set in a perm, but she was wrong. On the bottom of that page it was spelled out. Perm required it said. When Mom had my ears pierced I put up a fuss for show, but not much, and later, at the salon, getting my nails were done was nothing but a bonus. I had initially contemplated deliberately messing up just to face another punishment, but with the perm now, that strategy seems unnecessary. As I undressed and slipped into my nightgown, thoughts swirled in my mind about how Mom would disclose the news to Dad. After all, I'll have to remain as Emily until my hair grows out, won't I? With a smile, I drifted off to sleep.